Hello everybody, welcome to LC Gaming, and we are about to witness the best intro possibly uh, ever, in my opinion. Microprose Design Group, you know it's going to be good when it's a classic Microprose game. And as we fade away, we're brought in to uh, a solitary ship sailing from Europe across the open sea. Many of you should know that what this game is by now. And if you don't, I hopefully by the end of the video you will definitely be picking this game up. And when you see Sid Meier, Meyer and Brian Reynolds, you also know it's going to be a phenomenal game. Some brilliant animation going on here. What do we see here? Some Terra Incognita. I think that's Latin for Unknown Lands. We're building the tension. We're in unknown seas. No one knows where the fuck we are. And we're still going. Oh, and we're about to see some flying fish. Oh no, it's sea monster, then some flying fish. The dragon, flying fish. And what's this? It's a new land on the horizon. And, you know, it's been very ominous up until this point, quite foreboding. And we're about to see one of the most uplifting scenes of the mid 90s, I believe, as an absolutely epic song kicks off. And we have the classic colonization theme tune. There we go. So, as you may have guessed, we are looking at Sid Meier's colonization today. Uh, and the reason I want to talk about this game is I saw uh, a few articles of the top 10 4X strategy games of all time. And whilst this game uh, made it into the honorable mentions it actually wasn't in any of the top tens which really hurt me um, as I consider this to be one of the best 4x's of all time and we're going to dive into and look at uh, the game today and see why I think that and hopefully if you agree let us know in the comments uh, just a quick note if you guys are enjoying the content we're making please consider liking and subscribing as it really helps us grow and a big thank you to everyone who's uh, subscribed lately as we are growing so fast. Uh, we really appreciate it. So back to the video. So instantly we see some options. Um, and this is a key thing that this game has a lot of variety in it. You have the new world options, which basically is a random map generator. And if you click the customize, you can have a degree of control over that. But where this game really comes into its own is the Americas map. Um, I think it is wonderfully designed and it has so much nuance and different avenues to it. So let's dive into that one today. So we'll go with Original Americas. I'll click Discover for the purposes of today's video. But you can go all the way up to Deity, which I believe is really damn hard. I don't know if that's a general consensus or not. So instantly we have a good variety here of different nations. Um, England is centered around immigration. French is cooperation with the natives. Uh, Spanish is conquest against the natives. And then we have the Dutch for trading. My favorite personally are England and uh, the Dutch um, for their trade ability and immigration ability, I believe is pretty powerful. So let's go with them. Walter Riley, uh, we shall be Tom of the LT. And you get a nice little um, bit of information here. So it's historical and you can learn something along the way. Um, and here's the bonus that the English get. You don't need as many crosses to get an immigrant. So this is the king imbuing me with the power to uh, explore the new world on the behalf of England in 1492. All right. And now we begin another phenomenal sequence. Um, when I first loaded this game up, I absolutely loved this sequence. I would often, uh, you know, being a kid, 
had a whole backstory because my old computer back then I think it was what four megabytes of RAM it took so long to load this I would get through the entire scene so you know this was a uh, for a child's imagination this was a pretty cool uh, opening sequence um, that really gets you in the mood for the game sorry guys a morning coffee is required and this will uh, you know bring me back to something I've touched on already which is the music of this game is absolutely phenomenal and it adds so much to the vibe that you feel at different points so when you know you first discover oh we just can click by this now when you first discover you have joined the cavalry playing and you were just so happy to discover the new world. New England, we'll call this New LT Land. In honor of the channel. And where have we come out? We are in South America. Um, and if I remember correctly, there's probably a nice little spot to build down here. Now, one thing I absolutely adore about this game. It's, oh, stay for ships. No, we want to make landfall is oh here we get some again you see that change of tone and pace you, suddenly you're like oh this is dangerous you know uh we gotta make friends with these people uh, i have a few games which have been ruined because i accidentally clicked no uh, particularly on deity and then they're just immediately attacking you but we've made friends with the tupi tupi never really said it out loud um and so what I was saying is, I can see I'm in the north, northern part of South America here, so this is probably Brazil, I would assume. But depending where you start or where you sail to, there is so much variety uh, in this game in terms of what to pursue and what to do. Um, so let's just head back to London, England. And I will, I think, build here because I want a lumber spot for good production uh, but I want to keep this river as in my uh, production um, range so I think I'll build here and we've gone with Jamestown classic I used to love these little cutscenes all right and let's turn the numbers on so as you can see this is kind of one of the core mechanics of the game, um, something that made it so engaging, uh, I believe, is that you have all these production uh, values here. So here you can see I'm making seven furs. I'm also making four food. Um, and I can alter this by working the land and improving it. But then we have this whole kind of colony screen here where I can make everything from rum to uh, hammers for building, blacksmith tools up here where the blacksmith's house here for making tools which can be made into muskets there's a ton of variety here so let's crack on oh we have a rumor here and there's my bonus as uh, the english kicking in there i already have a carpenter available and i will grab a seasoned scout and let's head on back to ooh. yeah let's go this way all right and this is classic. Uh, this makes me want to declare independence right now, this music. So, here we have uh, a mechanic in the game which is kind of adds so much layer and strategy to it and a degree of random uh, RNG. So, we can pick a founding father, um, and each one carries a. Ooh, that's very good. Uh, carries a bonus so for example if I get William Penn here we can read a little bit about him um, but he will give me this bonus of increasing cross production by 50% so there are different guys for different um, different strategies I would say Benjamin Franklin is a phenomenal one um, as once you generate Liberty Bells some different events happen um, and that's a very good effect to have Hernan Cortez is the bad one, if you want to play the bad, the baddie way. Uh, 
So you can get treasure always from natives and then you get it free of charge. So normally you get taxed, I think half, uh, depending on what difficulty you're on. If it's deity, it's like 90% or something ridiculous. So what shall I do? Let's go with, let's go with William. No, right. I'll play the bad way, just for fun. We're gonna take Hernan Cortez. Um, and that means I'm gonna be clearing some land out. Oh, and we have the Dutch. The Dutch scumbags. Um, so other Europeans in this game, unlike other Forex games where you're playing against these other factions which are developing in the same way as you, you do have this mechanic in the game. Uh, so you are developing against other Europeans. All right, so we're gonna do old switcheroony here. And then I'll finish my little thought. And the reason being is we want to bring this guy out as a pioneer with the tools to improve the land. So as I was saying, you do play against the Europeans, which is like the other factions in the game. However, there is a unique element that the real game is not against the other Europeans. They, you can fight them, you can take their land, you can take their gold, you can pirate their ships, but the real game is against the king. Uh, and getting independence, which as it was back in the day, <laughs> back in the day, back during those times. Um, so in reality, you would think you're playing against um, the Europeans, but you are playing against this. So this is the English Expeditionary Force that will currently let off if I declared independence, which as you can see by my rebel sentiment, isn't gonna happen anytime soon. All right, we're gonna load up and head to London, England. All right, and we're gonna head back. Now, another very cool mechanic is the scout mechanic. This allows you to uh, explore, but also, wow, the two pie are very generous. Allows you to explore, but also uh, enter villages and get different bonuses. Uh, a little hint for you. The villages, which are the, the smallest level, um, they provide usually the least benefit. And the cities, which is uh, the Incas and the Aztecs, provide the maximum benefit. All right, let's speak with the chief here, like nearby lands. It's useful, but it's not the best thing. What you were looking for at this point is some uh, nice gold payoff. All right. We've unloaded furs from the new world. You're welcome. And I will, in fact, take 50 horse back with me. And you'll see why. So there's a very cool mechanic in this game where each troop is basically, this scout is 50 horses and a seasoned scout. Whereas this, um, Veteran soldier here is uh, 50 muskets and no horses, but you can combine them. So you have, uh, if you have these resources in your colonies, you can actually rebuild and replenish your troops. And it's something I would highly recommend you doing, particularly in the harder difficulties, uh, to, you know, grow your own. Oh my God, four. That means they have four uh, things on board right there which would be very useful to the pirate. Um, so yeah, I would highly recommend having horses uh, in your colony if you're playing on a harder difficulty. So as you can see, it's a pretty broad game. In, you know, on the surface, it's like, okay, we have one map, but there's so much variety in this map. This is just the South American lands. I will hopefully show you some of the other lands with my scout. Now, we want this dude to, I think I'll get him making Liberty Bells straight away, as that's kind of a, one of the more OP ways to get through the game, as you get more production once you get a high Liberty score. All right, and let's grab another Rumor. These things can be double-edged swords. They can sometimes screw you over. Uh, there is a content of uh, Founding Father who you can get to prevent 
this side of things and we're heading back to London, England. I, I think it's Fernando de Soto, maybe? Wow, 360. So that was very worthwhile. And I believe you can see faintly there is a sugar cane, which indicates this is a high production square for sugar. As you can see, seven sugar is pretty damn good. Alright, so we're trying to get Hernan Cortez into the uh, into our Continental Congress as soon as possible. Um, the reason being, <laughs> now this isn't a pleasant thing, but I can you know destroy these villages and get gold from them. Um, it's one way to play the game. Bit of a you know maybe insensitive way, but you know. Not condoning anything, this is just the way the game is. And, you know, historically, something that did happen. So, I'm not claiming to be a saint. So, what we will do is build... Uh, I think we're going to up our defensive capabilities as soon as possible. And... We're going to arm a Dragoon as well. Uh, and we have Hernan Cortez. So we have, oh, this is the best one, one of the best songs in the game. So Fountain of Youth basically uh, sends these rumours around Europe and everyone then wants to come to your, your uh, new colonies in the, the new world and you can get a bunch of picks and these will all be waiting for you at the docks so that is a very powerful pickup for me now to the nastier side of things I will begin my assault um, oh and this is a no-brainer Thomas Jefferson 50% production to Liberty Bells all right and rebel sentiment is up at 10% Beautiful. Okay, I do have to be careful here. Uh, I, I, I don't want them to take me out because then they can get uh, your muskets and your horses and it can make it very problematic to defeat natives if they get armed. I'm telling you. It's another very cool mechanic. Um, so they're, they're starting to change their attitude toward me as I'm attacking their villages. Incarnation. It's a very mysterious uh, people. All right, and we have got this land plowed now, and so we're producing six food, which is capable of supporting three citizens, which is fantastic. All right, I won't head up in case they attack. All right, we have destroyed the Tupai uh, camp and we have fortify in Jamestown. And we are heading down to attack this village here. So this is 400 gold straight in the bank for me. That's very uh, useful at this stage of the game. Now, ideally you, you know, the Incan cities and the Aztec cities deliver like tens of thousands of gold um, which is you know one very powerful strategy to play this game all right let's just head on down here now unlike in civilization there's no stacking um, so you can't be st like stack wiped with one attack um, and here we go we, it's the tax rate which determines this, and we got 400 gold. Alright, and I can see the Tupai are getting near me. Okay, Incan Village is no good. Uh, I'll attack with this one. The Veteran. 
get 600 gold for that. Now, there is a uh, mechanic when you're playing against the natives. You can, in fact, take out the capital. Okay, they're really not very happy with me right now. Ooh, Fort Orange. Goddamn Dutch, eh? I know we have a few Dutch viewers, so please do not take offense. Nothing is meant by this. Um, and we can bring back this treasure, and we're going to be pretty flush with cash soon. And we have all of our beautiful um, workers here, uh, ready to come to the new world. But I want to strategically take these guys, and I'll also equip them with horses. As my military seems to be the way I'm going to play this game. Here we go, we're attacking the capital, which is stronger. Uh, they do get 100% bonus. Um, and it will take a few more attacks. And uh, we have now 600 gold to our treasury. Okay, it's very ominous music coming in. As we are... All right, 900. This has hit the reset button, so the Tupai will no longer attack me, in theory. Um, you can never fully predict. Sometimes they will just randomly attack, and that is something you just have to put up with. Now, Rebel Sentiment's getting quite high, which is beautiful. All right, and unfortunately, We are not done with our onslaught. We will continue on. As I want to kind of clear the the coastline. <laughs> Sounds horrific to say. And the Tupai are now getting very suspicious of me. Once again. I've been routed though. They have defeated one of my troops. Alright, but now we have a lumberjack who is going to produce lumber. And this brings you to kind of another layer of the game, which is uh, the building aspect. And this is really cool as there are so many things you can do from like high production factories to churches, lumber mills, but you can also make stockades and forts. Um, which is a really cool way to play the game. Uh, make these fortresses, which are so tough to take. Alright, let's load up and head on back to London. Here we go. Alright, so that is complete. I think the next logical step is to clear this forest here. We've continued our onslaught. We will head down toward our soon-to-be friends, the Dutch. Now, this is a, a vulnerable position because the Tupai are going to attack. Oh, they didn't. That's good. Because if they attack and they win, they take something from you. Uh, so it could be the horses, it could be the muskets. I think usually it would be the horses on first attack, obviously. Now, right, you're going to head back. So we'll just take out this guy. And the treasure is just rolling in here. I mean, although the villages aren't, you know, as lucrative as the cities, or the, uh, so the camps aren't as lucrative as the villages or the cities, there is another uh, one in between, which is the Iroquois Arawak or Arawak, whatever they're called. Um, and I think, is there anyone else? The Cherokee as well uh, have this. So we will just take out this camp as well. And then onward to Fort Orange. So in this game, I'm pursuing the strategy of kind of using the natives to get golden. 
not the most sensitive way, but it is what it is. Um, all right, I will take a hundred horses, but you can do a strategy of where you are, in fact, simply let me horses. You can trade with the natives, which is ooh. All right, we need to solve getting that back. But that is a lot ago. Um, there's a strategy where you can trade with the natives, particularly the Arawak are really good for that. Uh, and the Aztecs and Incas as well. Oh, look at that. That's quite a nice haul of treasure. Um, you can play, you know, where you just coexist with the natives. Um, there is a lot to unpack. Uh, with this and kind of pursue that's all right so now we will put the expert carpenter which is so he gets six hammers as opposed to three and this guy will take over no what we'll be making first so we'll do first still and he can do it there so we want to build something now um, and I will build a stockade for defense as the first port of cool let's chat with the capital nearby lands that is disappointing and also there is the strategy of you know where to start in the game so south america is fairly typical you often start here as is north america there is an islands strategy i love to play um which is a lot more sea based then you can play in these areas but the cities are a lot more problematic to build around but you have a lot more valuable resources such as silver it's cool then there are some really wacky things like there's a little two square island up here where i used to go up there build and just stay there for the whole game and it made it very challenging and fun uh and another way you can play for example i used to play games where i'd only build scouts and try and win independence with scouts only so there's a lot to do but now let's meet our european friends i forget their tune Hello, my friends. Now, our forces protect valid interests. You can accidentally click no here. And a little uh, tip, you can often, on easy anyway, say how much do you value your worthless lives, heathen swine. And they'll give you a thousand gold, Jesus Christ. They'll give you gold. Um, and then I'll immediately break this treaty and seize for orange. I'm just an all-round scumbag in this game. Wow, there's some good stuff in here. Alright, we'll hold on to that for now. Alright, Fort Orange is not the first Dutch settlement. I believe New Amsterdam is. Oh dear, sorry. Rinse the Tupai. Alright, so we're gonna try... Oh, gotcha. Let's take this to Fort Orange. Which I might actually keep. Let's go to Jamestown first. Fantastic. And we're going to go here. And I'll show you why next turn. New Amsterdam must be around here somewhere. Fort Nassau. Wow, they have been busy. We won't withdraw our forces and no and prepare for war. Okay. I mean, I think the Dutch are not really thinking straight here. Oh, they just put their ship in port, which means. Alright, we're going to build here, Plymouth. And this is not a permanent town. Their ship's going to get wasted here. There you go. Alright. This is a town I don't want to keep. It looks kind of shit. So we will just make him a pioneer immediately. And get rid of the town. You can do that up until a point. I think once they have a stockade. That's no longer possible. So let's go more. And make him back into a dragoon. So we've replenished our troop. And we have horses left over. Um... 
mean, it's all good here. And I believe this should be New Amsterdam here. Right, they are expansionist, aren't they? Nope. We'll just go straight to war, no pretense. Alright. And uh, I don't want New Amsterdam either. So I'm just going to make this into a soldier straight away. Maybe that's a mistake, but... Oh, they've done a lot of work here, so maybe it was. Alright, and here we can now do a little sneaky 5,400. So almost 10,000 gold, but I do not want to live, uh, make a colony here, so I will abandon this one. So that's a handy way to kind of cash in. Alright, 600 gold. Now the Tupai didn't attack me, which is very positive for me. Right, so I will grab the sugar, but then I'll head straight to Fort Orange uh, to see what's going on. Uh, I need to defeat this Tupai force here. And we're looking for a camp. There it is. So, I think this has given a pretty good flavor uh, of the game. And why, you know, the many reasons, the music, the gameplay mechanics, the trading of between Europe um, and the colonies, the variety of strategies from natives to, you know, obscure locations uh, to trading with the natives. There's so much to do with this game. And considering it was made uh, in the mid 90s, I think it should be a contender for one of the best Forex games of all time. If you agree, let me know in the comments. If you disagree, let me know in the comments. I, I really want to hear what you guys think. And thank you for tuning in. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.